Hey there, my name's Jason, and I talk too much. So, I am introducing you to part one of a three-part video about how I incorporate VE Pro into my template. Now, to be clear, the video parts are basically putting things into contact, introducing them into VE Pro, and then establishing the connection between VE Pro and Cubase. So, today, we're going to be talking about how the sounds go into contact and how I route them. Nothing says Monday morning like integrating a new library into your VE Pro template. Who's with me? Seriously, I need to put a library into my VE Pro template, and I thought, why do it by myself? So, come on, let's have some fun, guys. This is the Wins tab on one of my farm computers. Uh, it does woodwinds and brass, as well as drums. And we can get into all that later. If you want more uh, details, let me know. So I'm literally starting from scratch here. Uh, this is for Cinematic Studio Woodwinds, which is an amazing woodwind library. Now, the first thing that you always need to do when you have a new library is batch resave. Basically, uh, it's going to relink everything and make sure that it's all in the correct spot, no matter where you've installed it on your computer. You do this with a blank instance of contact, because if you had instruments here, once the batch save finishes, it, it purges the entire multi. So don't do this in the middle of a project. So I'm going to point to cinematic, nope, studio woodwinds. And what it's going to do is just go through and resave all of the patches. Which, if you have a large library with lots of patches, could take some time. So plan accordingly. So now that we know everything is linked properly, we know we can load the instruments without any, hey, where are the sample issues popping up in contact. Now, I do my woodwinds in concert order. So we're going to be going piccolo, flute, alto flute, clarinet, oboe bassoon, and then low woodwinds. Some of this takes some higher planning because it is a template, and the idea is that things flow a certain way. So if I'm choosing a high piccolo staccato sound, it's going to come out of the correct bus in Cubase for short, high woodwinds. Uh, it's a very general kind of grouping, but right down here... These are my, basically, my bus outputs that go to Cubase. So all of my woodwind libraries go through either high long, high short, low long, low short, or effects. And in this case, since there's no effects, we're just doing long and short. So that means that these two bus destinations down here, I need to be able to point contact in the correct place. Now, one way to do this is to say, I'm going to put all my long sounds in this contact instrument and I'm going to point this instance of contact to the longs. I prefer having things grouped together. So that means that I would have all of my piccolo articulations, for example, in this same instance of contact. It's, it's how I like to be able to see it in Cubase as well. So instead of using key switches or patch changes, I have individual instances on each channel. So channel one would be the sustain. And then, for example, channel two would be the staccato. And then I would alt or option click these other tiles to purge the samples. I just want staccato. So that is how I normally have the woodwinds set up. So in order to go from a sustain sound in VE Pro going out of your sustain bus in Cubase, you need to have it pointing to a specific output in this instance of contact. Same thing with your short piccolo. It needs to be going out of a different specific output in this instance of contact, which means we need to have at least one more. This is just a single stereo out. Now, if you do this and you click the plus, you get all these crazy, I don't even know, it's just showing you output options that are reflecting the outputs down here, it's never made any sense to me. Now you can add channels up here, but you still need to connect. It's. Let me show you what I do. If we're talking about short and long, short and long right here, this is all I need, short and long, I need two outputs down here. What I will do is have two instances of contact right here, 
and then I just go to batch function clear output section create one individual output for each loaded instrument done there's my two outputs if I had five different outputs that I needed down here, I would load my first five instruments and do the same thing. It's going to automatically assign it. And the only thing you need to do is decide what you want to name them. I'm going to go with long and short. Now the beauty of this is all the instances that you have up here are defaulting to the first output. And any additional Instruments you add in the window down here are also defaulting to this first output. So you should make this output the one that most of your articulations are going to be going out of. And if we're talking about orchestra stuff, it's normally a long articulation. As it so happens, here's the output for contact. If you don't see this, it's because you're in snapshot mode. Just go to I instead. So here's your output, and there's the two that we just created. They're automatically routing out of one and two, and three and four. And then obviously here, if you want to make another one, that's where you do it. You don't do it down here. So, long, it's defaulting to long, great. Staccato is defaulting to the second one because we only had two, so that's great as well. Now all I have to do is add four more piccolos. Actually, three more piccolos, and I'll tell you why. I'm not going to use the measured repetition tile or articulation. I just, um, I prefer to do it in by hand. I know it was sampled that way and it's supposed to sound better, but I guess I'm just old school that way. So I'm literally just going to go one, two, three, four, five, and select them. That's one, two, three. Here we are on four. And here we are on five. All the rest of the articulations are long. So if these are played, they're going to go through the long. The only one that's short is the second one. And that's really all we need. Contact is assigned the MIDI channels automatically. And I've got my five piccolo channels. So let's duplicate this in Back to the Future, fast forward time for the flute and the alto flute. Okay, I've got all 15 instances of my instruments set up. And don't worry, you're not the only one that gets lost in trying to scroll across all these tiles. Let's go ahead and hide our outputs. They are not needed now. We know where everything's going. Now, normally here, I will work backwards just because it's easier to keep track of where things are. So I'm gonna go five, four, three, two, one. And another thing I did in the fast forwarding that you did not see was I was double checking how the status of the saved instrument was, making sure that I had the close mics chosen just because for this particular library, that's what I like. That's the staccato. Same thing here, solo flute, five, four, three, two, one. It's important that you have the first state of the instrument saved the way you want it. Otherwise, you're just having to go back and you know change the mix or change the balance or change the reverb setting every single one of these instances, and that gets old really, really quick. This should be the last instance of the solo flute. And then up here, we should be at the piccolo. Yay, I did it correctly, which means we should be at channel 15 down here. So I know that those are all routed correctly, and the only things going out of the short outputs are the single short articulation for each of these three instruments. So three instruments, five articulations, that means we have 15 channels here. When it gets that close, there's only 16 allowed because of uh, basically the limits of contact and the way VE Pro can address contact. We're not using these extra banks up here, unfortunately. I'm going to do another instance. I would rather have a clean set of three instances of contact with 15 instruments in each one then what would be the point three instances of contact and then there's one in here and by the time we get to the third one it's got 
three left. It just doesn't make any sense. So we're going to fast forward again, and I'm going to build these other two contact instruments based on this exact same idea. Okay. I've got three instances of contact over here. Each one has three instruments in it. So contact one is piccolo, flute, and alto flute. Contact two is clarinet, oboe, and English horn. And contact three is bass, clarinet, bassoon, and contrabassoon. And top to bottom, that's in concert order, basically, if you're looking at like a conductor's score. So I'm going to, this is my always double checking sort of thing. And it's always a pain because you got to have the panels big so you can see everything. But the idea is to look at the specific articulation that's chosen and understanding that the MIDI channels have already been assigned. So I kind of call this one, two, three, four, five, six. We're not using six. So we're just going through five. So we want to double check and make sure that the articulations are consistent from instrument to instrument. There's one, two, three, four, five for the solo piccolo. Then we should be coming to the flute, and that should be articulation one. One, two, we can double check. Two is going out to short. It is three, four, five. Great. The next one should be the alto flute, and it's on one. Yes. And then we should be two short. Perfect. Three, four, five. Five. So our first instrument is set. Let's go to contact number two and do the same thing. One, two on short. Up, see? And three. This is why I do it. Clarinet. Um, yeah, there's not a flutter tongue for the clarinet, so that's going to be a skip and then marcato. So obviously I had built this and I didn't do the articulations for this particular instrument. Oboe, staccato out of two, three, yes, and five. And then one, two, short, three, and five. So a lot double reeds don't have flutter tongue. And you can flutter tongue with clarinet, but it's not normal. So I've got an extra instrument here in the clarinet that's not needed. This actually brings me to a great point that I wish contact would address, and that is auto uh, reassigning your MIDI channels instead of having to go to this drop-down menu from hell. But you can't do that. So I have this instrument here. I already have sustain, staccato, trills. All I need is the marcato superfluous clarinet. So I'm going to have to just go ahead and delete it. Now we go from trills to marcato, which is what's supposed to happen. But now I go from MIDI channel 3 to 5. And now you could put it into your template that way, but that'll make me a little crazy. And more importantly, when I see it in Cubase, I'll think that something's wrong and that I'm missing an articulation. I really like the idea of having things be specifically in order as far as numbers go. So if I glance at it, I know whether I've moved something or not. So I'm going in, going from 9 to 8. Just another thing. Would it be hard to show you when you click on this so that right now I'm on channel 10? No, it gives me no indicator of that. So I'm just shifting everything by one MIDI channel because I took an instrument out from 12 to 11 and from 13 to 12. So now we know this one is good to go. Let's go to number three. Double check the same thing. Now, no flutters here either. So we're going to be going one, two, three, and then four. One, two, out of short, three, four, great. Next instrument, one, two, out of short, three, four, good. Next instrument, one, two, out of short, three, and 
before. I know it's not the most exciting, but it is really, really important if you want to have the proper bus structure. You need want to be able to do stems quickly. You want to be able to have your reverbs or your EQs or whatever kind of processing you're doing to your different sections in the orchestra. If you want all that stuff working correctly without having to build it every single time, it's really important that your template be built correctly from the ground up and contact or whatever other sample player you're using this is your foundation and if something's messed up here it's just going to be messed up later on now the last thing i like to do what is this cinematic studio woodwinds i guess um i usually give these a little label so i just know from a glance uh, which ones are high and which ones are low now, what we're going to do in the next episode is talk about how to get things properly out of contact and into VE Pro so that you can correctly route it to your computer. But until then, it's turkey time. <laughs>